Hello my beautiful MK Love fam. Welcome back to another episode and today let's talk about manifesting love. Now we're not just talking about the next relationship that just comes to you, but I'm talking about manifesting long-term love. Love that you see in the movies where maybe you're at the stage where you're like, I don't know if it's possible. Let me tell you, it's possible. I used to be in a four year emotionally abusive, toxic relationship with a narcissist, which left me feeling like I didn't have a soul. I felt broken. I allowed someone to treat me that way. And then as I started dating, I manifested a guy who was, well, I actually wasn't manifesting. I attracted a guy unconsciously who was 14 years older, was riddled with all of these blockages, treating me like shit. And then as I began working on myself, I began to manifest the first dude who ever treated me right at the time, because I was still a vibrational match to him. He was a big jump from where I had been. And then I met my husband, Peter, and it kind of went first relationship off the scale, the next relationship, the next relationship. And then my husband was like up here. So it's crazy that you can go from toxic relationship to being married to the man of the dreams. What I'm gonna share with you today is literally the steps, literally step by step, showing you how I was able to manifest my husband. Now it takes some time. I'm gonna walk you through, literally hold your hand each step of the way to help you. I'm gonna to start to teach you how you can start dating yourself so that you can become a vibrational match to the relationship that you want so that the partner of your dreams can magnetically be drawn towards you. Obviously there's a lot of work that you have to do and that's why I work with women on this journey in my eight week coaching program. I actually heal the root cause of their pain, which is their childhood trauma. And I talk about releasing pain in one of the steps, but it's where most people struggle. And it's where I struggled for like seven flipping years. It took me seven years to figure this out. And when I look at it in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, there's people that never figure this out. So we're manifesting love, manifesting a conscious relationship where you wake up every single flipping day and be like, oh, Good morning, honey. Good morning, sunshine. Like you just look at the person, you'll be like, shit, like you're so worth the wait. All right, let's get on to number one. Write a list and identify all the toxic patterns you've witnessed in your past relationships. Now, this is really interesting. I've made this video two times on my channel, how to manifest anything and my top 10 tips to manifest anything. But there's one thing that I've learned along the way that I miss, which is the first step. I want you to reflect back on your previous relationships and identify the patterns in which you were attracting. So if you are manifesting toxic relationships into your life, think about where did that stem from? When I looked at my first relationship, you know, I had nothing really to go off. I'm like, oh, I attracted a toxic relationship. I didn't realize that that was because of the relationship in which was modeled between my parents when I was younger and it was heavily toxic. And you know, that was my first reference of what a relationship was like. So of course your first relationship, if you were born into a toxic environment, a family that has broken down, your parents are separated, divorced, whatever it is, you may have a single mom that raised you, a single dad, whatever it is, Think back to the first seven years of your life. And then as you start identifying patterns, you're like, I attracted this, I attracted this, I attracted this. What the hell am I doing wrong? You know, and once you identify those patterns, that's like your secret weapon. Once you'll be able to identify it, then you can move forward. So for me, the patterns is I was attracting toxic relationships, um, people that were very domineering, in the first two, um, and I didn't have boundaries to assert to them. You know, you saw the red flags and you ignored them. You're like, oh, I can fix you. You know, that's how I used to be. I'm like, oh, you know, he's really broken. I can fix it. You know, I've always been such a mother, just the real nurturing soul. Um, yeah, anyways, so what came up for you when you saw number one? All right, let's look at number two. Identify your non-negotiables of your ideal partner so you never settle again. Non-negotiables, okay. So the universe needs to know, okay, what are the main things that you want? Because then they can bring you other things that's like, you know, a bonus. What are the non-negotiables? For me, when I was manifesting my husband, 
I was looking for a male. He had to be straight. He needed to want to have children, to be vegan, into the spiritual realm, a very conscious person, someone who loved being outside, someone who loves to travel, and someone who has amazing communication skills and treats me like a queen. And we had an equal relationship because I've had relationships in the past where it was like such a power game. Everything was just such a game. Um, you know that song from Paramore? You are the only exception. I oh, love that song. And he is the exception to all the rules that you see on all these stupid dating sites and whatever. Yeah, there was none of that. So identify your non-negotiables. Let's get on to number three. Now, I want you to write down all of the other qualities that you are looking for. So you've got the non-negotiables and be like, what else is there? So oh, my list, I wish I still had it. Oh my gosh, I wish I still had it because I started writing down things that we would, oh, get this. I actually, was it one of the non-negotiables? I'm not too sure. There was something that I was writing down where I wanted my husband, because I was looking for a husband. I wasn't just looking for like the next guy. I was like, no, I'm going to wait for my husband. And I said, I want to live in a shipping container home. No joke. When I met my husband, well, he was my housemate at the time. <laughs> And we were talking and he mentioned that he would love to live in a shipping container house and it was one of his goals. I was like, what? I've never heard anyone say that before. I've watched like countless videos on YouTube and tiny houses. And if you watch Bryce's channel, Living Big, um, Living, oh, what? I can't even remember, Living Big in a tiny, I can't even remember his channel. Anyway, if you're into tiny homes, you'll know Bryce's channel. It's amazing. And we had that connection about the shipping containers. I was like, oh, dang, like this is kind of amazing. Other things that I was after, I wanted someone to like, oh, actually, I can't even remember. What else did I ask? Oh, I wanted the partner to be amazing with money. That was really important. Actually, I think that was a non-negotiable. It's crazy. It's been so long. I'm, I can't really remember my list. Oh, at the time I was into cycling. If you go back through my old videos, you would see uh, cycling when I used to vlog and I wanted someone to cycle and I had a road bike and when I met my husband, he had a road bike as well. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So literally just writing down every aspect to like what type of work did you want? Did you want an entrepreneurial spirit? Did you want someone who's into a nine to five? What did you want? And I really listed out every single thing. And when I manifested him, I was like, oh, he's so close to being everything that I wanted. You know, he was all of the non-negotiables, which was great. And then when it came to the other qualities, there was one that it took me a year to be able to see it. Because sometimes like you manifest people and you're like, my intuition is saying yes, but I'm like, oh, it's kind of crazy. Once you go from like toxic relationships to being in a conscious relationship, it is so unfamiliar to you. It is like, why are you treating me nice? Why do you want to see me all the time? Blah, 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 all of this stuff. And it was really difficult for me. Anyways, that's a whole another video. So writing down the non-negotiables and then everything else, like literally write about it. Like I said something about like living off the land. I wanted to have a vegetable garden. I wanted to have solar powers on, solar panels on top of the shipping containers. Uh, I'm not just talking about like a, 20 foot, 40 foot shipping container. I'm talking about like multiple shipping containers. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, there was just so many things. Oh my gosh, I wish that I had it. What I'm basically saying is you need to tell the universe what the flip do you want? Because once you tell the universe what you want, they start bringing you like all of these like test dummies as I call it. Because sometimes you write the list and you're like, ah, shit. That's not what I want because you don't know what you want until you get it. You know that song from the Pussycat Dolls? Be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. So yeah, if you haven't been in a relationship before and or, or maybe you want something but then you think you want it and then you get it and you're like, no, it's okay to be like, thank you, next. It's just an opportunity to refine your, your list. Okay, what else do I have next? Number 
four. Okay, number four is identify why you want this type of relationship and why this is so important to you. Like, why are you now looking for a conscious relationship? Like, really, what is the underlying message? For me, I was looking for a con conscious relationship with a beautiful, high vibrational man to treat me like a queen, vegan, spiritual, all of that good. But I was looking for them because I wanted to break the cycle of abuse in my family. I wanted a partner, the love of my life, to become the dad that I never had growing up to my children, do you know, or to our children, do you know what I mean? Like I wanted somebody who I would know wouldn't abuse my children. I wanted somebody that was amazing at communication, who wasn't violent. I, I didn't want, I don't want, I'm not, I don't have children or I'm not pregnant yet, but I, I didn't, I don't want my children to go through the things that I went through as a child. And I made sure that I worked my friggin' ass off to become a vibrational match to my husband so that our children don't need to recover from their childhood as adults. And that was really important. I also wanted, I knew that I was worthy of this kind of love, you know? I knew that I was worthy. So once you figure out why do you want this and you feel passionate about it and it's your driving force to do the other things that I'm about to tell you were on my list, it's kind of like your motivation. Um, yeah. All right, let's have a look at number five. Ooh, this is a good one. Number five, reverse engineer your intention into chapters required to get you there. So your intention is, I always say it in present tense, so the universe gets tricked up and be like, oh, she's talking in present, so it must be already here, and then they can already bring it to you. So I always say, I am so happy and grateful now that I am married to the man of my dreams. We're in a committed, conscious, high vibration relationship and every single day I wake up and I'm like, mm, damn, you just get better by the day. And I can't really remember exactly what it was at the time, but that's what I say in, in my power affirmations that I listen to um, every day. It's like, okay, that's your intention. Then when you start to reverse engineer, it's like, what the flip are you going to do to get you there? So let's just say that's your intention for this six months six months, it'll probably take longer. That's your life goal, to manifest a conscious, high vibrational relationship with the partner of your dreams. Like we're talking lifelong partner. However old you are or however many years you have been dating, that's basically the amount of years you need to unprogram all the bullshit that you have been through. Because I'm assuming you're watching this video because you have been uh, attracting some toxic relationships into your vibration. You're like, mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm. I'm not gonna settle because I am worthy, I am lovable because I exist. And everything that I have ever possibly wanted, it is possible. And by staying in that high vibrational state, moving up the emotional guidance scale, I know that I can become a vibrational match and attract him, or attract her, whatever floats your boat. So once you have the intention, you have to figure out, like I can't just go from zero to 100. Yes, it's possible, but there's a lot of steps along the way. You know, think of it if you're like baking a cake. You're not just gonna be like, open the oven and the cake disappears, you know? What do you have to do? First of all, you have to have ingredients. You gotta make sure you have a pan. You gotta make sure you got some butter to grease it. Make sure you have power to turn on your oven, a mixing bowl and all your dry ingredients and all your wet ingredients and you need to have a recipe. Um, or if you're very gifted, <laughs> make it up. And you need to know the timing of everything. You need to have like one of those, um, what do you call it? Like skewers to test, to see if the cake is wet once it's cooked or if it's dry. There's so many different things involved. This is just a very tiny example. It's just what came to me right now. But you need to figure out, how are you gonna get your freaking cake? You know, how are you gonna get the cake and eat it too? There's a journey in which you have to go on. So you have to segment it down. So if you're gonna be like, you know, I wanna manifest my husband by the end of the week, honey, let me tell you, it ain't, ain't gonna happen. I'm not saying, okay, it's very unlikely that it's going to happen. There's things that you have to go through. You know, it's like um, what we just start off with, maybe just dating, or maybe it's more like getting rid of all the bullshit that you have in your house that's of your ex, or pictures on your computer that's of your ex, a tattoo that you have, I don't know, whatever it is, you need to get rid of it. If you keep reading everything from your past chapter, there's no way you're gonna be able to begin the new one. So you have to figure out 
what does that look like for you? Clean up the past. Then I would be like, okay, I need to start dating. You need to have like a date outfit. You need to start dating yourself more, more importantly, because when you start loving your own company, you know, you won't feel alone. You know that song, you're never alone from Tori Kelly. Listen to that on Spotify. So good. Um, and she's saying, yeah, you're never alone. She talks about never alone as in like having God with you, but you can call it your angels, the universe. If you have a loved one, call on them to help you. You know, you have to fall in love with your own company so that you are secure and that you know that you're worthy. So when someone comes in, you can identify the red flags and be like, yes or no. Okay, that, there's a lot in that one. And that's gonna require a lot of planning. Let's see the next one. Number six, add in actionable steps to break down what you need to work on each month. Okay, so we actually begin the new moon, I think on, what date are we, March? I think it's March the 25th or the 26th, depending where you are in the world, or depending on where the flip you are, when you're listening to this. Um, you can have a look at deluxemoon.com and you can figure out when's the new moon. Um, so we'll talk about the moon in a second, but you need to figure out, okay, so if this is my big goal to manifest the partner of my dreams, what do I need to focus on for this month? Maybe this month is the month you're focusing on cleaning out all of the bullshit that reminds you of your ex. I'm talking everything, including your flipping mattress, especially if you're into feng shui, do and your bedding, oh, that is like a big feng shui no-no. And that's what I did. It took me a long time to get to the courage because I spent five grand on a mattress at the time. And now they have memory foam mattresses, which are so much cheaper. Yeah, it's kind of just simplifying your life, getting rid of things that remind you of them. Even if it's like jewelry, I used to have so much flipping jewelry and now I've just got my wedding ring and crazy. My, if you saw me on Instagram, my rose quartz um, crystal bracelet that was gifted to me from the beautiful ladies at the Marla Collective, it broke on me. Rose quartz crystal, if you're into crystals, is the stone of the heart chakra. The heart chakra is self-love and love for other people. Um, and it's so interesting that I wore this every single day for three and a half years and then it broke. I'm like, oh, that's amazing synchronicity. That means I just released a massive blockage and I'm just about to begin my rebirth. Like I feel on the verge of something flipping huge. And I'm like, I have so many ideas of what it could be, but the universe hasn't projected it to me right yet. So you'll just have to wait. <laughs> so get rid of things. With me, mine was jewelry. I sold everything um, that my ex gave me. I had really beautiful stuff because he used to work in a jeweler's. But I was like, I'm not wearing that shit. I'm be reminded of you. Like, Ugh, I didn't want to do it. I went so extreme. I used to wear yellow gold that I went to silver, <laughs> the complete opposite. And now I'm into rose gold. Um, but I'm, I don't know. It's just, I just have a weird thing about yellow gold. Anyways. That's all right, let's have a look at number seven. Ooh, number seven is begin working with the phases of Mama Moon. So if you go to the website that I told you about before or deluxemoon.com, there's actually an app you can get on Android or iOS. It's really good. It's a paid one if you use your apps or it's free if it's online. And it can sync you up with Mama Moon. Now, I used to run a series called Weekly Angel Guidance where I'd help you deal with the energies associated with the moon. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll keep you updated and let you know as the moon changes. So, Mama Moon is amazing. You know why she's amazing? Is she teaches you to go with the flow. It's not all hustle, 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 grind, grind, grind. It's about, okay, tuning in with the moon. So if you look up at the night sky and the moon is black, in total darkness, that is the new moon. That is a time for you to draw deeply into yourself. That's that deep introspection. When the moon is super bright and illuminated, that's the full moon. That's when your energy needs to be like dance parties everywhere. Oh, it's just an amazing time of the moon. So many things I could tell you about Mama Moon. She's changed my life. I use her to help sync my menstrual cycle, especially last year when I was traveling with my husband for seven months. All of the traveling and the stress that comes with all of that unsynced my cycle. And I like to have, um, menstruate on my new moon or around the new moon and then ovulate on the full moon. 
And when you think about it, if you're like in deep introspection in the new moon, when you get your period, you'd want to retreat. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. You know, that's why I pre-film videos. Um, and that's when I do not take any coaching clients during that time. And I have a policy with my clients. I'm like, if you're on day one or day two of your cycle, tell me and we'll reschedule our call because that is the most sacred time of your menstrual cycle. And that's when you can connect with your higher self, your angels, whatever you want to call it, God, on a higher level. And that's when information can come to you. Anyways, I could talk forever about that. And I feel like that's a video in itself. So if you have any questions about Mama Moon, let me know down below and I can make a video for you. Okay, next one. Number eight is reprogram your subconscious mind with higher vibrational thoughts. Now, if you're new to my channel, you're like, what the flip is she talking about? Reprogramming the subconscious. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is a stem cell biologist, He's freaking amazing. He is, he studies epigenetics um, and he identifies, he has identified within his study that in the first seven years of your life, that is when your brain is in the state of theta. Now, theta is a state of imagination, um, highly in, intu intuition, and that's when children become a sponge and start absorbing their environment. So if you grew up in a toxic environment where your mother was weak and your dad was a narcissist and your dad was projecting all of his bullshit onto you, which was a result of generations of abuse and crazy shit that just went down, you are unconsciously absorbing that as a sponge into your little beautiful high vibrational brain. And it's actually preparing you for how you're going to be in adulthood. So think about the dynamics with your family in the first seven years. That's the most important. Obviously, yes, for your whole childhood, um, you'll be able to notice different things, but that is the most important. So the reason why in my program, I focus on three key ingredients. First one is reprogramming the sub subconscious mind, rebalancing the chakras, and the third is realigning the body, the mind, and soul is because that is how you become into vibrational alignment. Alignment is, look at the emotional guidance scale, vibrating on the frequency of love. What is happening to my thing today? It's not, I didn't bobby pin it today and it's moving. Anyway, it's annoying me. So reprogramming the subconscious, that is basically high vibration, what, what do I call it? Power affirmations or positive affirmations, whatever you want to call it. So that is literally having things on repeat. So for my clients, I personally create their own power affirmations based on what's going on in their life and also based on the seven chakras. So some of them could be, um, I am so happy and grateful now that I feel safe in my own home. It feels amazing in every possible way. Um, if we were to relate, then we could say that in terms of yeah, you want to feel safe in your relationship. You don't want to be having to walk around on eggshells. Um, then you could say for the sacral chakra, which is your pleasure center sexually and platonically or just pleasures in regards to like drinking lovely cups of tea, you know, that gives me pleasure. Not everything has to be sexual. So it's talking about um, how can we relate to relationship? I am so happy and grateful now that I am I'm a sensual and sexual being. I love that I am confidently navigating my sexuality in my own personal relationship and with my partner. I feel fulfilled in every possible way. Um, if we go to the solar plexus, which is your chakra for your personal power, that's that inner line, that inner fire of you, which links with the, the sun. Um, so what could you say? I am so happy and grateful now that I am assertive and I am, so, I really should have put these on the screen. My goodness. But do you kind of get my drift? What I'm saying is that you need to think positive thoughts to manifest this relationship into your life. I will make a video for you actually, maybe a meditation to help you with this. Cause that's a lot involved when you're doing this, you need to listen to it daily morning and night. Nighttime, let it play on loop-de-loop. -loop. So it reprograms your subconscious while you sleep. It's like my secret trick, which helps all my clients get amazing results and heals their childhood trauma in eight flipping weeks. Anyways, that's a whole video on that one. 
Number nine is rebalance the energy centers within your body. This is the chakras. So this one, you if you're new to the chakras, then there's a lot involved in this. And I spend seven weeks doing this in my eight week program, <laughs> a week for each of the different chakras, literally healing them. It's basically looking at where is the pain? Where do you feel discomfort in your body? And if you are, if you do come on as a client, I can literally feel where your pain is. Um, when I jump on a call with you, I literally feel it in my body. And sometimes um, it can make me cough. It can make me cry. Um, if it's really traumatic, like I worked with a client this week and we were talking about her sexual abuse that was caused from her dad. And as we're talking about it, she was getting upset and then I could feel her pain and she's crying and then I'm crying and it's like, okay, there's more to heal. So if you need help with this, you need to check out my free training or go to melaniecakelove.com slash free training. And there's a 20 minute video where I talk you more through it. And then if you want to take it further, you can jump on a call with me just so I can see if we're a vibrational match for you to be invited into the program. There's a lot involved in that one. Um, one thing that I did when I was releasing my ex is that I actually wrote a letter to him. Um, I had you know, gotten rid of all the pictures, sold all the jewelry, sold the mattress, actually moved overseas to be away from the family unit. And then I thought I had gotten rid of everything. I got rid of all my relationships that were attached to him, friendship groups, everything. The last thing I did is I wrote a letter to him. And in the letter, I thought I'd be like, you're a fucking bastard, I can't believe you did this to me, blah, 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 blah. I said, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I just wrote three or four pages of complete gratitude to be like, thank you for treating me like a piece of shit. Thank you for telling me that you weren't going to move to the UK and I could just go by myself. Thank you for making fun of me in my dress when you said that I look like a clown, where I knew that I had freaking amazing fashion, but you hated that I looked different. Um, thank you for being rude to me about this. Thank you for writing that text to your mom and saying, oh, I'm going to get rid of her in the new year. Like, I'm so grateful for everything you did because you helped me rebuild friggin' stronger. And if it wasn't for you, there's no way I would have learned all of that bullshit to become a vibrational match to my husband, the most beautiful man in the whole wide world. There's a lot of work in that one. And that's something that could take you years if you do it by yourself. I kind of think of it as in like having a padlock and a key and you're trying to find the key to open the padlock. It's like, no, you just come into Mel's program. Within eight weeks, I'll give you the key. You get to make the choice for yourself. Number 10 is to surrender to the process. Surrender. If you are so fixated, just like, where is my husband? Where is he? Why isn't he showing up? You are literally saying, I'm not ready for you yet. And the universe will be like, he's almost here. And then as soon as you say that, they push him or push her away. It's like literally getting in your car, putting in the GPS coordinates of wherever the flip you need to go, not the coordinates, coordinates, but the location of where you wanna go. You get in the car, you're almost there, and then you question the GPS, which sometimes happens. Maybe this is not a good example. And then you go back home, you're like, it's not working. It's not working, but you're almost there. You know, so surrendering to the process, that's the toughest thing. Once you've identified everything and you go through the journey, if you are so attached to it, it's not gonna happen. That's why you need to fall in love with dating yourself. When you get to a stage where you're like, I have rebuilt my armor so much stronger. Um, oh, you know that song from Demi Lovato? And you can never hurt me again. Um, for the love of the daughter. Oh, listen to that song, that one. Oh, or is it Skyscraper? I don't know, Demi Lovato has some really good songs. Um, what was I gonna say? Surrendering to the process. Once you release the expectation of the exact timing, because the universe figures out the how, you know, once you surrender and you know that he is coming, no matter if you're dating a guy and you're like, no, that's not it. You're, I'm getting closer because you kind of feel this thing within you where you feel like you're getting closer and closer and closer. And then eventually you'll be like, oh, relationship's getting better. Next one's getting better. Next, better, 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 and better. And you kind of get to the point where you find yourself so in love with the single life and you're like, I freaking love it. For me to give this up, maybe give this up is the wrong word. For me to be in a committed relationship, you have to be friggin' amazing because what I've got going on right now is so flippin' 
good. You know, it's like, mm, drop the mic, boom. So, and that was the case for me too. Like I knew he was coming. The crazy thing is my angels told me at the beginning of the year, you need to move to the Gold Coast. This is when I was living in Brisbane, in Queensland, Australia. And they were like, you have to move to the Gold Coast. So like every weekend, I would go on the Saturday to the Gold Coast and be like, okay, where's my like groceries gonna be at the supermarket? Where's my farmer's market? Where am I gonna go for yoga? You know, where's my vegan cafes? Like, where's the vibe of where I want to live? And I started traveling back and forth, like looking at houses. And I just knew the angels told me in July, you'll meet your husband. And my family thought I was crazy. Like my auntie Mare's like, darling, don't get your hopes up. It came July and I was like, he's not here. I'm like, did I get it wrong? I met a guy, but he wasn't the right one. And then I think it was like, when did I meet him? Like October and November. He literally, no joke. He literally walked through my front door. Crazy. And now I'm married to him. So just want to let you know, wherever you are in your journey, it is possible to become a vibrational match to the relationship of your dreams. You have to do the work. You're not just going to sit around and be like, Mel, I wrote my list, the non-negotiables and this, this, this. Where is he? I'm like, it doesn't work like that. You have to believe that he is coming or she is coming. I always say he, because I'm always thinking about my situation and how this worked for me. So whatever it wants to be for you. Um, yeah, and I just knew that he was coming and I didn't lose hope, even though somebody broke my heart just before then. I was like, what the hell? And I just knew he was gonna come. And because I believed, like I truly believed he was going to come. And then when I met him, I got so scared <laughs> because I'm like, shit, I did it. <laughs> I did it. I called my mom up and she was like, I knew this was going to happen. Cause I started telling her about this housemate. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. We're already at 33 minutes. If you have any questions and you would love me to clarify them for you, please comment below. If they're super fabulous and lots of you agree with them and give them the thumbs up, I will make a video to help you out. If you need any extra help, please check out my free exclusive training at melaniekatelove.com forward slash free training, especially when you get to the part about releasing blockages, reprogramming the subconscious, rebalancing the energies. There's a lot involved in that. And if you're not someone who wants to waste any more time, I would love, 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 love to work with you. Anyways, that's all I have to say. I really need a drink now. That was, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> Anyways, have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next week. I love you, I love you, I love you. Goodbye.